Hey, Professor Wills here. So um, let's continue um, exploring uh, what's happening as we approach the 1980s. And this is the era of postmodern art. Um, what we find with uh, this group of artists, uh, many of whom are very dissatisfied with modern art conventions, and they begin to turn to mass market vehicles um, as um, inspiration and source material uh, to challenge and deconstruct um, equally widespread and mass uh, messaging um, uh, that is a lot of which is very ingrained in society at that point. So they're looking to um, challenge um, belief systems. They use art history to do it as well. Um, and overall are very successful in reframing ideas for a contemporary uh, art audience. So the majority of it you'll find is based in cultural critique. We're going to take a look at two female artists um, who are examining um, the representation of women. Um, and so without further ado, let's get into these two icon icons um, in modern uh, art photography. All right, very good. Um, here we have um, um, a synopsis of what I just said about postmodern art. Um, and on the right, we have an example of our first artist. This is uh, the work of Barbara Kruger, and it's called Untitled, parentheses, your gaze hits the side of my, my face from 1981. Keep in mind, this is a pretty large scale photograph, 60 inches by this is approximate, approximately 40 inches. Um, and she's known to embrace what they call appropriation in postmodern art, meaning that she is turning to existing modalities um, in um, our visual world to um, achieve her aims and goals. Um, Barbara Kruger uh, was also, uh, before she became associated with, with postmodern art, she was a photographer. And she, in her former career, worked for many years for a very popular um, fashion magazine of that era called Mademoiselle, it was like Vogue magazine. And so she was very fluent in the power of mass media and how effective it can be to send messages and enforce stereotypes um, with their pages of airbrushed and cropped images overlaid with um, graphic text um, to direct um, meanings, get people to be enticed by articles about beauty, about, you know, diet, about love life, all those kinds of things we see in the newsstands, even to this day at the grocery store. So for works like you see here, Untitled, Kruger draws from the playbook of the magazine world, um, beginning with a large kind of typical headshot that we see on, on the covers of a lot of these fashion magazines. Um, but instead of using some kind of, you know, 1980s supermodel, um, she's using something um, from art history. Um, it is the a marble sculpture from the classical world, probably Greek or Roman. Um, and it represents um, someone akin to the mythological goddess uh, like Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. Um, by doing so, uh, you know, she's challenging uh, the idea of, you know, these uh, supermodels being put on the pages of these magazine um, and being elevated uh, to the status of, of goddess um, in order to, you know, uh, make us feel inadequate um, as if, you know, if we buy the magazine, we will find and cover their secrets to their beauty and be able to achieve um, such, uh, you know, otherworldly beauty as well. Um, but it's important to also point out the pain that goes along with um, being a woman, 
um, in such a superficial lens. And so it's there that you see, uh, instead of art titles of articles or, you know, hints at secrets to beauty and getting that, you know, sweetheart of your dreams. Instead, it says, um, in the typical kind of magazine sans serif, you know, typography, your gaze hits the side of my face. Um, a very kind of literally striking reminder at the cost of beauty, at the cost that um, the beauty industry um, and the expectations of women in um, throughout history um, have uh, taken a toll and uh, wounded so many. So that is the work of uh, Barbara Kruger. It's worth pointing out uh, another very famous example of um, her work that you may have seen, um, particularly on social media in light of the recent um, uh, battle over abortion rights. Um, that is exactly what inspired this work of art um, that she created um, also in the 1980s. Um, it's called Your Body is a Battleground. And I just wanted to share with it, share it with you quickly um, because it's very, it's uh, execution is similarly um, inspired by um, fashion magazines. We have a large headshot. And then of course the, the bold sans serif typography that is the combination that is her signature look. Um, they have great examples of um, Barbara Kruger's artwork at LA's downtown Barode Museum, which is worth checking out. And again, keep in mind how large scale these works of art, they're really um, powerful in that way, but also in sort of the reduction um, of color and ingredients. So what she's doing here um, is she's commenting on, of course, you know, a woman's right to choose um, and how that has become um, a battleground um, as it was decades ago. It still is an ongoing um, struggle. Um, but what she does is also, you know, riff on history. So instead of a classical world goddess, we see a woman, you know, sort of a mid-century, 20th century looking face um, in black and white. Um, ha her face is cut in half. So it's a, it's a mix of a positive image on the left, a negative image on the right. Um, and then of course the text overlaying it. So um, it, she's doing that in a way to uh, not only talk about, you know, the struggle of women, um, but the word your is also gender neutral. So um, in many ways, this work of art has legs um, to call out, um, you know, the battlefield, the, the, um, uh, the, the, the social struggle for equity among peoples of all uh, races, um, sexual persuasions, um, uh, self-identification. So um, in uh, using both uh, kind of a, you know, a reduction to a large photographic image and type, she's able to um, inspire a lot of um, cultural uh, critique and thought in her work. Let's move on to our second um, postmodern photographer, and that is Cindy Sherman. I've got two works of hers to share with you. On the left, we have um, a photograph. Uh, she's also a photographer, and this one's called Untitled Film Still, number 35, um, taken in 1979. Uh, the work of Cindy Sherman um, often features herself in it. Um, except these aren't traditional self-portraits. Um, in a series of photographs, that's why they're numbered, for instance, this one is number 35, she's riffing on the promotional photographs um, that were often taken in black and white, maybe like eight by tens, and sent out to um, various promotional 
um, you know, magazines, newspapers, sometimes cineplexes to get people to get excited about various movies coming out, to give you a little taste of what's going to the content of the movie, who might be starring in the movie, that kind of thing too. So it is a form of mass market um, promotional photography. But what she's doing is um, she's reflecting on Hollywood and the depiction of women, particularly in stereotypical roles um, in popular media culture, especially um, television and movies. So what she does is she outfits herself in various costumes. She'll put on a wig um, and then create sort of a set um, that her character um, occupies. So for instance, uh, some of these characters could be the girl next door, you know, those typical stereotypical female roles and the, the sort of the narrow band of choices um, from back in the day, or perhaps the femme fatale, something like that. In this case, I'm sure you can guess this is supposed to be the housewife, um, but she's not, you know, the typical I love Lucy kind of comedic housewife, you know, um, chasing after her husband, um, that kind of thing. Instead, we have something that's actually grabbing our attention. We see that um, she may be wearing an apron, but the scuffs on the door um, make us question what kind of environment does she inhabit? Is it a happy home? What is up with her hand on her hip? and that gaze in her eyes. Um, it's a package that's done differently. It invites more questions. It adds texture to this woman's life, even if it takes us down a path that isn't as sugar-coated and sweet as an episode of I Love Lucy. Um, so this is a way for her to showcase the narrow roles of women. Um, as represented by Hollywood, and that we really can't trust um, what those who were in power at the time and still are um, have decided represent all women. And again, it connects to the art history of the male gaze, um, object objectifying women um, either sexually or as good girls or as, you know, subservient, you know, um, players in the family and professional dynamics. So that is an example of the work of, of Cindy Sherman as a photographer. The work on the right looks like a painting, doesn't it? It's also a photograph. Um, and it also features Cindy Sherman um, cast in a surprising way. It's called Untitled, number 224. And what she's doing is she's riffing, uh, once again, on something, but it's from art history. Um, in the 17th century in Italy, Caravaggio was one of the most famous painters. And this on the left is a representation of that very Caravaggio painting, um, paying tribute to the god, the ultimate god of partying um, and wine, Bacchus. Uh, so you see Bacchus in the typical way he's represented, even going back to, you know, he was a classical world god um, and, um, you know, holding a cluster of grapes, wearing a, you know, grape uh, leaf, um, um, you know, tendrils around his head in toga. Um, and then match next to it, you have Cindy Sherman um, um, mimicking the very oil painting um, in which this god has been um, painted. Um, she too is holding a cluster of grapes, wearing a toga, including the grape vines. And if you pay attention, the makeup um, is very much aligned with um, the shadowing and effects of the original Caravaggio painting. Uh, she's even given herself a few uh, more masculine kind of um, build in um, this image as well. So it's it's her kind of donning another identity um, and an identity that's um, very male. Um, and it's interesting to see her cast herself as this very kind of parting masculine God um, because it raises, you know, the question of 
you know, if if we didn't know that was a, a woman and we thought this was just a, a male artist, you know, mimicking the, the god Bacchus, um, you know, or if Bacchus was a female um, deity, um, wouldn't that not fly very well in society? Wouldn't a woman behaving in such a, you know, hard drinking, partying way be frowned on? So it's an interesting... Um, riff on art history to reflect on, you know, how women are seen, how women, how society controls how they behave. And that is another example of um, the direction of postmodern art in the 1980s. Thanks for joining me.